Vegas Dave versus Gary V. The biggest topic in the sports card industry right now. Who's right, who's wrong? Remember, it was me three years ago that predicted the market would boom. And now I'm the first person in the world to tell you this market's gonna collapse by the end of 2024. I'm gonna be right and Gary's gonna be wrong. Watch this video and find out why. Before I tell you why the sports card industry is going to crash, let me tell you a little bit about my history. It was me that bought the Mike Trout Super Fractor for $400,000 and two years later flipped it to $4 million. Over a $3.5 million flip in under 24 months. That sale alone blew up the sports card market. It made that market go from a hobby to a business that brought all types of investors in the industry because people now saw the industry as something where you can make money from and not just a hobby. All right, so you have taken the sports card world by storm. I mean, when I first got into the game, everybody was talking about what you were doing. You are the loudest, most prominent voice in the sports card space. There is no one in the sports card space that doesn't know of you or talk about you. I invested in two people, Mike Trout and Derek Carr. And a lot of people say, oh, I'm only making a video because I'm mad at Derek's car production, Derek's car values. Guys, you have it all twisted. I'm making more money and higher percentages off Derek cars than Mike Trout. With Mike Trout, eight to 10 times my money. On cars, they were three to $500 this year. Their cards are selling from fifteen to twenty thousand dollars, and there's over thirty recorded sales of these cars all over the world. So a lot of people say I'm pumping and dumping car guys. I'm holding cars for another two to three years. That's my vision. It's always been my vision with Derek Carr. Let me tell you, I want to save this market. I want to save this industry. I still have over a million dollars invested in this industry. So the whole point of this video is to tell you what's going to happen, and hopefully we can prevent it from crashing. So everybody in the sports card industry is talking about Vegas Dave versus Gary V. And I think it's so crazy and it's also amusing to me that people put up polls and they say 98% Gary V, ha ha, only 2% believe Vegas Dave. Guys, you guys are idiots, you are sheep. You are polling people in the sports card industry. Of course they're gonna say they want the market to go up. Of course they're gonna believe it's going up because they all have money invested in it. It's like if Trump and Biden go to a Republican state and say, who do you think is gonna win? And they ask a poll, they're all gonna say Trump in a Republican state. They go to a Democratic state say, and say and do a poll, who's gonna win, who's right? Of course, a Democratic state's gonna vote for Biden. This is stupid, it's a no-brainer. Listen, if you want real people to give you real answers, why don't you go outside the sports card industry and poll other savvy investors such as Mark Cuban. If you look at what Mark Cuban said recently, he agrees with me. He agrees with Vegas Dave saying the market will fall apart and that's why he's liquidating some of his sports cards. As I stated before, I was the one that predicted the market was gonna boom. I made that video three years ago when I bought the Mike Trout Super Fractor for $400,000 and I told you to break the Honus Wagner record. In less than two years, I executed that plan and that vision. People can laugh at me now, but in 10 years from now, this card will be worth five to $10 million. Mark my words, I know what I'm doing. It was me that predicted the market, not Gary. Gary predicted the market would boom a year after that video. So I'm making the prediction here on the Rich Eisen Show that sports cards is an incredible alternative investment for the next three to five years. Yeah. Also, I am the first person in the world to let you know and to predict the market will crash by the end of 2024. The issue I have with Gary is that we both have millions of dollars in the industry. I don't care what people say. I'm raw, I'm real. I'm not here to make friends, I'm here to give you advice. Gary can't tell you now after pumping cards every single week and every single month, uh, it's gonna crash, get out. It's like me selling picks to you and saying, buy my picks, but they're gonna lose today. He's not gonna do it. So the difference between me and Gary and the issue I have with me and Gary, he says he's real, but he's not real. Gary, I know you're watching this right now. You're brilliant, I'm brilliant. Real recognizes real. You know the market's gonna crash. We both know it. When you lay your head on your pillow every single night, you know Vegas Dave is right and you're wrong. And a lot of you people in the sports card industry are saying, 
I'm going with Gary. Gary hasn't been wrong yet. Let me remind you, not only has Gary been wrong, every entrepreneur has been wrong. But don't forget, Gary was wrong on Uber and Gary was wrong in Netflix. I was gonna buy unbelievable amounts of Netflix stock three years ago. I didn't call him back, never did it. I passed on Uber twice. Had I wrote a $25,000 check into that company like I did the other companies, it'd be worth $300 million. And Gary's gonna be wrong on sports cards too. And here's another issue I have with Gary that I don't agree with. He's predicting the 86 Fleer Jordan's gonna hit a million dollars. He's wrong. It's gonna go for over a million dollars, 1.2, even more. And all you sheep in the industry are gonna get excited because you think the market's exploding, but you should be terrified. So this Vegas Day versus Gary Vee issue came upon because I made a simple post on social media, the market will fall apart by the end of 2024, just like the subprime mortgage industry did. Within minutes of that post, big auction houses, big dealers, big investors asked me to take the post down, why? Because they agreed with me the market's gonna crash, but they said it's booming right now, they wanna make as much money as possible. These are the same people you guys are praising for making the market flourish and bringing the market to an all-time high. But they're playing you guys. You're praising them and hating me for telling you what they don't want you to know, that the market's inflated, it's gonna crash. The reason why this market's gonna crash is from overly inflated prices on certain cards. Let me give you an example. The Michael Jordan rookie, the Steph Curry rookie. Steph Curry National Treasure rookie was $20,000, $30,000 two years ago. He didn't even play last year and his car just sold for $980,000. Does that sound right to you? Michael Jordan's 86 Flair rookie, 30 grand, 40 grand for years. The last dance happens, jumps to 100 grand. That makes sense. Then it goes to 200,000, 250,000. And this last week it goes from 250,000 to 730,000. Does that sound right to you? Let me ask you guys a question. If I'm 160 pounds for three or four years straight and I leave social media for a month, no one sees me, I come back a month later, I'm 240 pounds, shredded, ripped, at 4% body fat, what are you gonna think? Do you gonna think that's natural? Or do you think these muscles are real? You're gonna think no, it's steroids, growth hormone. Something unnatural happened to cause my body to change that fast in 30 to 60 days. Same thing with cards. How can you think these are real card prices that are going on in the industry? What I'm gonna share with you next, only a small group of individuals know about this in the card community. These individuals are causing the inflation of prices and these individuals are what's gonna cause the industry to crash. I'm trying to protect you guys. Remember, I still have millions of dollars invested in the industry. I wanna protect the market. See, when the pandemic hit last year, the stock market started to fluctuate. And at that same time, my Mike Trout rookie sold for $4 million. People from the stock market industry now saw the card industry not only as a hobby, but an opportunity to make money. So they had to diversify their portfolio. So you started seeing real big money coming from the stock market into the card industry. You would think all this big money and new money coming from the stock industry into the card industry was a great thing. But what you don't know is that these individuals brought over their same stock market mentality and practices, which is gonna end up crushing the market. Traditionally, if someone bought a $100,000 card, that would be the real actual value of the card. See, what's going on now in the industry is that certain people are buying big ticket cards and selling percentages and shares of that card to individuals in the market. Now, a person that could never afford a $100,000 card can now own a piece or a share of that card and feel like they're a part of history. And this, what I'm explaining to you right now, has never happened in the market before until the last few months. For example, if I buy a $100,000 card, I would sell 25 shares of it at $10,000 a piece to people around the world. Just like that, the car goes from 100,000 to 250,000 and I make money. Once I receive my money, I then put the card for sale online, but I have one of my friends or buddies in the small community buy that card for $250,000. And what happens? The whole industry gets excited. Card value more than doubled, the investors get paid back their money, everyone's happy, the card market's booming, and they repeat this over and over and over again. Sounds amazing, right? But this is the reason why sports cards are overly inflated right now. Remember the Michael Jordan card that just sold for $738,000? The Jordan card was 30, 40,000 for years. Bumped up to 100 grand from the last dance. I understand that because the last dance influenced a lot of people to get back in the industry and collect Jordan cards. But then it went from 150, 200, 250,000, all the way up to $730,000 within two weeks. How is that possible? You still think these values are real? Curry, Curry's card was thirty to $40,000 for years as National Treasure rookie. He didn't even play last year, 
comes back this season, we're not even two weeks in the season, and his card sells for $980,000. Does that sound real to you? Here's the issue. When one of these individuals from the small part of this card community decides to pull out, they made enough money, guess what? Once one pulls out, another one's gonna pull out. It's gonna be a domino effect. When all these investors pull out, these overly inflated prices of a million dollar cards will go right back down to under $100,000 You'll get stuck holding the bag and the sports card industry will be crushed. So not all these recorded prices are all fake sales. However, most of them are from inflation, but some are real. But here's the issue with the real sales of these big ticket cards. With all these cards being sold at all these record prices every week and every month, it's become an ego war now with people with money. Who can one up the other? Who can get this card? Who can pay for that card? So they're already boosting card prices that are overly inflated in the first place. These new investors with big money are treating cards like a commodity that is gonna to continue to go up with inflation, but they had never been around to see the ups and downs of the sports card market. They haven't experienced cards losing value and dropping in prices. Now some of these sales are real, the majority are inflated. Now I know a lot of you are gonna tell me that you saw in person cards at your local sports card shows sell for four or $5,000 that were once four or $500 that you saw with your own eyes. So you have to believe these sales are real. Yes, those transactions are real, but what you're missing is what's going behind closed doors that the whole market's inflated all the way from the top. So it's bringing all these card prices from the bottom all the way up to mid-level to high tier prices. Again, the whole community is affected by the people at the top, that small community selling shares of cards inflating the market. How can you tell me that a Kobe Bryant rookie just sold for $500,000 this week and it was never over $100,000 even at the pinnacle of his legacy when he passed away? How does that make any sense? How can you tell me that a Mahomes rookie is really worth $800,000 plus when it took over a decade before Brady's rookies hit over $800,000? That makes absolutely no sense. A guy that's been playing two years is gonna suppress prices of Tom Brady, who's the GOAT? That makes no sense at all. And this is all caused by inflated prices in the industry. And one final card that I have personal experience with, Fernando Tatis, the dumbest investment in baseball. You're telling me a Fernando Tatis rookie, red refractor out of five, sold for a quarter million dollars. I bought my Mike Trout red three years ago for $180,000. How can you tell me Fernando Tatis, who played one season during a pandemic, 60 games, how it's worth more than the Mike Trout red refractor that I bought three years ago. Trout was playing for almost a decade, the best modern day player in the history of baseball. 180 for his red refractor, Tatis a quarter million. How does that make any sense? Wake up people, these are all artificially inflated prices. Wake up. And with this big surge in the market, you now see athletes, celebrities, big time influencers getting involved in the market and the industry. All this does is just add credibility to the sports card market. An average person that looks up to a celebrity and see that celebrity buying cards, that average person is gonna follow the lead and jump in the sports card market. The whole market is hot right now because all this influence coming in. At the end of the day, all these prices and all this buzz is caused by those artificial sales at the top no one's talking about. And right now, all sports are being affected by this trickle-down effect. Now you're seeing people invest in all types of sports. Tennis, golf, even Pokemon. Pokemon is garbage. That's the worst investment you can make. And also, stickers. This is a Michael Jordan rookie sticker. This is going for $55,000 right now. This was a couple thousand dollars for years. You know what I think about this? This is what I think about this. And this is what's gonna happen in the sports card market. It's gonna burn, burn, and burn hard. Remember, nothing lasts forever. This reminds me exactly of the subprime market crash in 2007 when the US economy got wiped out. This is not gonna destroy the US economy, but it will destroy the sports card industry and it will destroy the hobby because the trust is all gone. Now after hearing all of this, any of you guys have any second thoughts? Who do you believe now, me or Gary? I do give Gary credit for one thing in particular. He did predict that the sports card market would boom after me, and he also said the sports betting industry would boom. These are the two top sectors to invest in. Guess who the king of both of them are? Me. Let me be clear, I want this market to flourish. 
I'm actively invested. I have over a million dollars in the industry. No other distributor, no other big investor, no big auction house is gonna tell you the truth. Only I am. And the crazy thing is, is that you guys are giving these people so much praise for bringing the market back and having the market explode. Be, be these are the same individuals that are destroying the market and lying to you. I'm the one telling the truth and I only wanna do this so I can protect the market. Remember, it was me that predicted the market would explode. Many of you guys laughed at me back then. I'm gonna be the first one to tell you the market's gonna collapse by the end of 2024. I wouldn't laugh at me this time. So mark my words, the sports card industry will collapse by the end of 2024. And one more thing, a lot of you people in the industry are saying, I'm not gonna to listen to a guy who predicted the Saints to win the Super Bowl. Let me just remind you, who's Gary's team? Let me get it out of the garbage can. The New York Jets, enough said.